Hey guys, I'm Alex. So this recitation is just a brief rundown of machine learning DevOps and deep learning DevOps, and uh, more generally where this course fits in to your education in regards to this and in the workforce and in research. So let's begin. So yeah, in an introduction to DevOps, DevOps stands for, well, developments and operations, right? Combines so the ideas of development and operations and integrates practices from software development, dev, and IT operations, ops. And yeah, one of the goals of DevOps, particularly the style approach, is that with the whole integrated approach, you can accelerate delivery of stuff, shorten the development cycle for faster delivery of features and updates. And yeah, it tries to align with business goals to ensure frequent reliable updates in alignment with business objectives. So yeah, it makes sense. Here's a little figure about DevOps. Okay, so that was general DevOps, just a brief rundown. Here's machine learning and uh, and deep learning pipelines. MLOps is machine learning operations, which is essentially extending DevOps principles to include machine learning, model development, and deployment. The components are continuous integration, automatic testing and validation of data and models, continuous development, so integration of models into the production environment. This is rather self-explanatory. You train a model and you in advance plan how you're going to be integrating the model into the production environment and continuous monitoring. So just, yeah, just all your metrics, your logging, so on. One DBs would be a good example of this in, the, in regards to the course, for example. So yeah, moving on. Let's talk about a couple tools that would be useful here. Starting with PyTorch. PyTorch is what we're using in this course primarily. You will see some scikit stuff perhaps and I suppose you could also use TensorFlow in Keras, but generally you'll be using PyTorch. PyTorch allows you to save and load models, to create neural networks, to whatever structure you, you prefer. It'll be what it'll be using for homework one, part two, homework two, part two, homework three, part two, so on, and probably even your projects. However, you probably actually could also do this with TensorFlow, but PyTorch is a much more common thing nowadays, though some workflows would prefer TensorFlow, and there's optimization reasons you decide on something else. There's also more more recent developments, something like JAX being integrated and more common nowadays. People are trying to push for JAX based on how it optimizes with GPU, and there's also Keras, which is uh, which is a quite simple and straightforward way to do machine learning stuff, the exact same way you'd be doing it with PyTorch, but different, and the focus is different. And scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is kind of great. It has pre-implemented models. It's really, really easy to work with. Has a lot of support for various MISC things in deep learning. Yeah, for continuous integration, you have something like Jenkins or GitHub Actions. And for model deployment, there are a lot of approaches to this. There's a standard Docker, using a Docker Swarm, or at a much more high level and complicated, larger company, you'd be with something like Kubernetes. These we are not, won't be covering too much. Docker might come up here and there, but yeah. And for monitoring and logging, Prometheus is a really common one. So why even have this, this conversation? Why, why are we even talking about ML ops and DevOps? It's because this general approach is extremely beneficial and can save you a lot of work to actually consider things in context like this. In this course in particular, especially with homework one, part two, that you might seem like it's pretty streamlined and straightforward in the way you approach it. You end up writing your data loader, you make sure your validation is right, you do any processing you need to do for your data, then you end up thinking about how your model should be designed and so on. And then you think about how your training should be and your de deployment, quote unquote, which, you know, could be GCP, a GCP server, could be something local, could be containerized, set up in Docker or AWS. You're kind of getting to see w where this relates. This becomes even more obvious with homeworks like homework three and homework four, where you're actually writing a large portion of the code and it's not just as there for you. You actually need to think largely in advance of how do I want my training to be done in relation to the specific transformation I need to be doing in my data loader. How will this work 
when I'm trying to actually deploy the model to an instance to test it on or something like that, right? Though it is true for a lot of these, you would be locally doing stuff. This would have come a lot more relevant if, when you're doing the project, for example, since you'd be working with multiple people and it might not be as necessarily obvious how to actually communicate and to work on the same project. So you actually have to think about MLOps. And this is generally a whole thing for the pipeline. You can look at it that the initial pipeline starts with thinking about how you're going to approach the problem, thinking about what the data set is and how you actually could even create a model that could learn based on the data set you have. And then doing all of your data set transformations, preparing it, putting it and preparing and writing the training loop, and then actually training the model and testing it and then doing all your testing for actually preparing it. And, you know, in our case, you submit, uh, you submit your test results to Kaggle. And that would be the deployment phase. But, you know, in an actual deployment, you'd also have to be thinking about, okay, well, now I have my models trained. I have all the weights set up. I've saved the weights. I've created some system for that where I can actually store them. How would I be, how would I be deploying and using the model? Where this might come up for projects. So you can think about what you're doing in alone in 785, particularly with the homework part twos as a kind of mini ML ops training because it actually kind of closely reflects the type of random things you'd end up being working on in the actual field. And it especially reflects how you'd be doing stuff with research projects, particularly when you're actually doing the project for the final portion of the class, which quite heavily it can reflect actually working with a research team on some project or some problem. So you can think about what you're doing in alone 785, particularly with the homework part twos as a kind of mini ML ops training because it actually kind of closely reflects the type of random things you'd end up being working on in the actual field. And it especially reflects how you'd be doing stuff with research projects, particularly when you're actually doing the project for the final portion of the class, which quite heavily it can reflect actually working with a research team on some project or some problem. So yeah, that's kind of the point, the whole point of this. The whole point is that by looking at things as an ML ops type of thing and considering the whole pipeline altogether, you enhance reliability and efficiency of your ML systems, right? And also, by thinking about it this way, you get more out of the class because you end up realizing all the synchronicity between what you're doing here and what you might actually be using this for in the future, rather than actually just thinking of it as a self-contained assignment. Since the skills here are actually very transferable. Anyway, I hope this is helpful, guys. If you have any questions or you want to talk about ML DevOps stuff, just... You know, I'm Alex. Feel free to reach out to me or email me. It's fine. All right. Have a good day, guys.